like to acknowledge that we're on the the land of the Gagadil uh, people of the Eora Nation, the traditional owners of this land. Um, and I'd like to start tonight with a couple of lines from a poet by the name of Dougie Young, who was born in Burke. It comes from a poem in the land where the crow flies backwards and the pelican builds its nest. The white man took this country from me. He's been fighting for it ever since. OK, well, basic income 2017. Uh, a universal basic income is not a standalone policy, like our current social security income support system. A UBI needs other social policies to give it coherence. As well as the UBI, there needs to be additional policies for health, disability, education and housing at a very minimum. The difference between UBI and the existing social security system is that everyone would receive exactly the same amount under a UBI, whereas with the current social security system, people are paid different amounts according to the, which eligibility category they fit and according to means testing arrangements. A UBI is paid to each and every individual permanent residence as a right of citizenship or of residence. Um, the amount paid is not calculated on the household or family membership. It is purely an individual matter. A UBI doesn't discriminate on the basis of gender or race age, wealth, or lack of it. Um, it uh, doesn't discriminate on the basis of marital status or any other social status, apart from requiring you to prove that you're a permanent resident. In order to make a UBI acceptable, it would need to be at the rate at least, of the single age pension. And there would need to be an absolute guarantee that the UBI could not be garnished by government, business or individuals. This would prevent the fiasco that uh, Alec Pemberton uh, spoke here uh, a couple of months ago uh, about the Turnbull government's robo-debt procedures, where imaginary debts to the government were recouped by three private standover debt collecting firms acting on commission. My interest in basic income centres around how it would efficiently abolish poverty. Although Professor Guy Standing uh, in his book, Basic Income and How We Make It Happen, at page 94 says, a basic income is not ultimately about eradicating poverty, it is about social justice, freedom, equality and security. OK, well, the question of equality or equity. A UBI is an equal payment. It is not necessarily equitable. But because once a UBI is in place, the government of the day would know the absolute minimum that people had to rely on to support themselves. And then it is possible through other social policies to build a more egalitarian society. Now, there are alternatives to a basic income. 
we could determine to share all the wealth and the bounty of this land equally. But that doesn't currently appeal to those who are advantaged. Um, we could, if we were totally lacking in imagination, continue as we have done since 1910 in this country, and long before that in Europe, persevere with various poor law welfare systems where judging a person's worthiness is the basis of determining the amount of assistance people receive. The system is often called assisting according to need. My needs are what I want. Your needs have to be assessed. Um, now, there are some people who have argued that you don't need a, a basic income. What we need is a job guarantee. A job guarantee, eh? Well, the job guarantee is the soft face of Malcolm Turnbull's job search and work for the dull tyrannies. The latest budget foreshadows implementing drug testing for young unemployed. Such behavioural impositions are just another cruelty in the larder of inequities inflicted on the poorest in our society. At the extreme, such policies degenerate into 14th century workhouse policies and like the prison camps of Belson and Auschwitz, if you aren't willing to labour, then you starve. Uh, the assumption behind the need to compel people to work is that if there was no compulsion, then people would not work. Such ideas have been around for a very long time. During the 1930s, any unemployed relief provided by the government in Australia uh, obligated the unemployed to do civic works in return for the sustenance. Hence, the payment was called the SUSO. Hugh Stretton in 1996, in an aptly entitled speech called from the poor laws to poor laws, given that the Brotherhood of St Lawrence links such policies back to the English poor law of 1834. In fact, similar motiva uh, motivations contributed to the enactment of the 1601 poor law in England. Joel Handler in his 2002 Basic Income European Network Congress address notes that the values were present in the concern expressed about the possibilities that welfare relief could assist the sturdy beggars. And that was enshrined in the uh, 1348 Labor's Act. Mutual obligation, participation income and the deserving undeserving dichotomy have a very long history indeed. Now, some suggest that if there was a basic income, people would leave work in droves. In droves! Um, and the reason they suggest this is because they don't trust themselves. So how can they trust other people to behave responsibly? Between... 1974 and 1979, residents of a small Manitoba city, Dorfan, were selected to become subject to a project that ensured a basic annual income for everyone. For five years, monthly cheques were delivered to the poorest residents of Dorfan. No strings attached. And for five years, poverty was completely eliminated. 
Uh, apart from Dolphin, there have been uh, other uh, projects. Namibia, Kenya, Brazil, India, more planned for Holland and Finland, Scotland, and Canada. Canada uh, is going to start in Thunder Bay and, and Hamilton. Um, and just recently, the Hawaiian government indicated that it's intending to look at the issue of whether they should run a pilot UBI in Hawaii. Now, when pilots are run in countries which are poor, the sceptics claim that the trials don't apply to Australia. But as Professor John Altman says, they are directly applicable uh, to regional and remote Australian Aboriginal communities. Yet our Liberal government would rather inflict welfare cashless cards and basic cards on our Indigenous population. In the countries which are affluent that have pilots, the sceptics tell us that in those countries they might be culturally different to here. So we couldn't have possibly have a UBI just like they have in other rich countries. Of course, these same sceptics claim that greed is good everywhere. Trickle-down economics is necessary ever, everywhere. And so we can be sure that uh, of one thing, tax cuts for the rich are good everywhere. But money for the poor? Oh. Can we afford it? Can we afford it? There's enough money to pay a UBI. Yeah. The question is willingness, choice, determination as to whether we want to introduce one. Now, before I go any further, I'd, I'd like to look at why pay married couples at the single rate. The argument goes that uh, two people can live more cheaply than one. And that may be the case for many couples. However, there are too many married partners who know there is sexually transmitted debt. <laughs> In such cases, the government does not intervene to prop up the income of the person married to a spendthrift. Pity, penny, but, yeah. Uh, the, uh, now, so what's the justification? for paying a couple less if they can make savings compared with living alone. Why should thrifty people be penalised? After all, economic efficiency is glorified everywhere else in our capitalist society. And whilst there's de rigueur in Australia to suggest that professionals, even billionaires like Twiggy Forrest, understand the poor better than the poor themselves. <laughs> and therefore, we know what's best for them. And that justifies ignoring what poor people say they need and want. Now, there is evidence from overseas that suggests that such value judgments are in fact a nonsense. 
uh, Carlos Regigas Castestan, a senior economist for poverty and global practice at the World Bank, has written that the eligible households, the poorest, may benefit least from conditional transfers and suggest that unconditional cash transfers may be preferable. OK, well, how do we pay for it? Hey, uh, I'll show you soon. Uh, in February this year, I suggested a combination of new taxes, ending subsidies for industry, and converting our war machine into a defence force tasked with protecting Australia would allow us to actually have a universal basic income. If those who can't read it, the T-Tail says the money required to provide adequate food, water and education, health and housing, for everyone in the world has been estimated at $17 billion a year. Now, these figures are very old because this tea towel's very old. <laughs> now, that's a huge sum of money, about as much as the world spends on arms every two weeks. Oh. You know, that, that is something which we need to think about. We're wasting $50 billion on submarines. Strike fighters are exactly what we need, aren't they? You know, I want a strike fighter so I can fly all around the bloody country. OK. Well, let's leave defence for the moment. The taxes I'd like to introduce or increase are as follows. We introduced death duties on all estates over $2 million. Abolish the tax-free area for income tax purposes. Remove negative gearing on all housing. Restate capital gains tax at least to their original levels. Abolish family trust tax scams. Ensure multinationals pay taxes at reasonable rates. <laughs> Clamp down on rich Australians, uh, individuals and firms avoiding and evading tax, and sort out the superannuation system. Um, now, <laughs> Guy Standing's book is a... Uh, Pelican publication, $23. You can't say fairer than that. Uh, and it's available in Australia. It's a 2017 book. Um, basic income and how we make it happen. Now, for those of you who are rich bastards here tonight, <laughs> there's a, a book, a 2016 book edited by... Uh, Jenny Mays, uh, Greg Marsden, and, and my good self. It's a Palgrave Macmillan book. Uh, it's very expensive. I suggest you don't buy it, but you get your library to order it in and read it there or borrow it from the library. OK, well, look, uh, I'll get out of the way and uh, let uh, Gigi have her moment of fame and uh, I'll see you at question time later.